Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. This video is going to show you how to install Umbrico using Visual Studio, NuGet, SQL Server and IIS on your local machine. First of all, what we're going to do is create a new project. It's going to be a web project, ASP.NET web application, and I'm running on version 4.5.2 of the .NET framework. And we'll give the application a name. So I'm just going to call it install Umbrico. And I've chosen the projects directory, my directory, documents, Visual Studio 2015 projects. Install Umbrico is the name that I'm calling it, and I want to create a directory for the solution. Click on OK. Then it needs to be an empty web application. Turn off auth authentication, turn off host in the cloud. So leave all that. So basically, it's just an empty application. Click on OK. We need to create the database. So we go into, I've got SQL Server 2014, as I was saying. So I'm going to call the database install Umbrico. And the options on here, I'm going to make sure that I've got a 2012 database because of my hosting package that I've got has got a 2012 server. So click on OK. So I've created a database called install Umbrico. Now what I need to do is create a new login for that database. So install Umbrico SQL Server Enforce Referential Password. Install Umbrico, tick that. Reader, writer, owner. OK. Creating a login with a blank password. No, I don't want to continue. I should have put a password in there, so I'm just going to do that now. And then click on OK. So now I've got a login for that database, so we can close that. So we can go back to our application. And what we want to do is we want to use NuGet Package Manager Console to install Umbrico. You could do it with the Windows interface as well, more of a visual one, but I like to just use Package Manager Console. So if I just type in here, down here at the bottom, install package Umbrico CMS, and I just hit enter. So that will go to the NuGet library. It will find Umbrico, the latest version, and it's currently 7.5.3. And it will get everything that it needs to get from NuGet and all of the dependencies for that and bring it all down to, um, to my project. There we go. So this is a screen when you know that it's been successfully installed. Also, the PM is back here as well, so you know that it's finished doing what it needs to do. run Google Chrome. Now when it asks me on this, when I'm doing the installer, I don't want to debug it because I've not had anything to do with this code yet. So I always run without debugging. So if there are any errors, I don't want to have to step in and try and solve them at this stage. When you use this, this is going to be the default admin account on the Umbrico site that you create. So what you need to do is make sure you remember these details. So keep them simple. But when you have actually set up your site, you want to disable this after creating another account that you're actually going to use. But just choose install. What we want to do is we want to choose SQL Server. That will probably do Compact Edition, but we want to use SQL Server. So I need to get the server details, and we just need to grab that server name. Close that. Go back to the web. Okay, so I've pasted that in there. So the database name is install Umbrico. And I also gave the login name of install Umbrico. And I put my simple password in there. I don't want to take, use integrated authentication and I just want to continue. So for the dem purpose of this demo, I'm going to choose the Fano starter kit. So if we go to users, click on the dots, click on create, click on create. Now you can change your password and then give yourself full administrator permissions. Uh, 
and then hit save. So we've got that account and what we want to do is we want to make sure we can log in with that account before we disable the other one. So if I try and log in, I'm definitely in. And just to show you that I've logged in but I can't see the setup account to disable it anymore. So that's what I was trying to say. So if we log out and we go in as setup, I think it was, it does it as the email address for the username when you do it that way. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to go to users and I'm going to click on myself and I'm going to, un I'm going to tick these two, disable Umbraco access and disable user. So now what I want to do is log in as the install Umbraco. So I'm back in, I've got rid of the default account. So this is the Umbraco site and what we can do is go to the home page. And if we click on properties tab and go down to link to document, we can actually open up the site, how it is with the default starter kit enabled. Here we go. So this is what you get when you install Umbraco. You get a starter site where you can look in the back end and see where all this is edited and how that gets put onto the page. Basically, you can work backwards. That's what I like to do when learning something new, just work backwards from an example. So this is running off a local host address. Um, what I like to do is have a separate URL that I run on my machine so that I can just go to that URL and, and I don't have to be debugging in Visual Studio by hitting run. I can actually just go to the URL and see the site at any time on my machine rather than have to debug with Visual Studio. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to give permission in the in the Windows folder to allow the IIS users to be able to view these files because when it's running in local hosts like that in IIS Express, it's got permission to do that. But when you want to do it in the other way using IIS, then you need to allow permissions to see these things. So what I usually do is give access on the web folder so this is where, if we look at all of these, this is what you would point IIS to. So if we go up a level and we right click and do properties and then go to security, we can edit the security and we can add. If we go to advanced, find now, we want to look for I, IIS users and also I user. Okay, and then we want to just give them modify permissions. Okay, so that will apply those permissions to the folder and all of its children. So now what we can do is set this up in IIS. So if we create a new website and then we choose install Umbraco as a name. We point it, as we were saying, to projects, install Umbraco, and that's the web folder there. You know it is because it's got app data and things like that inside it. Click on OK, and then we're just going to call this install Umbraco.web.local. Hit OK. So we've got that set up now in IIS install umbraco.web.local that won't work uh, that will go to Google so what we need to do is actually add this into our host settings so we need to open up notepad and in administrator mode and we need to open we need to go desktop so we need this PC C drive Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. Well, I call it etc. And then etc. And then we need to show all files. And then we need to open hosts. Now, in here, this is where we're telling it when 
when you're looking up this address, you need to go to the local um, IP address, which is 127001. So if we just put the IP address there first, and then we put the URL address that we want it to go to, and we just save that and close that, won't assume that you mean HTTP, and it will just do a Google search for it. So always put HTTP in front when you first start using that. If we then hit enter, it should recognize the address. It will find it in the host file, and it will tell it to look on this local machine, and it will look for the website address that is bound in the bindings, and it will the basic settings of that will tell it to go to this path here to serve out the files from this web folder. And then, it, as you can see, you now have it running on this URL on your local machine using Visual Studio. Now, now there's one other thing as well. We need to just go into Visual Studio. If we open out Solution Explorer on the web project, if we right click on that and go to properties, what we can then do is go to web tab and we choose local IIS and we change the address to be install umbraco.web.local. So now, if we did want to debug from inside Visual Studio just by hitting the Run button, we can do that, and it will load it up using that new URL that we've created. And this time, we do want to allow debugging. So if I click on OK, now it runs from there. And that also means that we can go forward slash Umbraco, and we can log into Umbraco. So if we want to, we can have a quick look at this while we're at, we're at this point. So as you can see, welcome to Fano, that relates there. So this is using the grid editor in Umbraco. I think this came out in 7.2, so it's been around for a while now. Anyway, if we just want to change this to be codechair.co.uk and then hit save, you'll see that on there. If we go to the front end and hit refresh, that's what's edited there. I hope you found it useful. If you did, um, please hit like and subscribe. I'm going to try and start doing some more of these tutorial type videos to help other people using Umbraco and C Sharp and maybe some advice posts as well.